So imagine this is the schoolroom, and behind me I've got six students, uh, volunteers. So I say, come up, we're going to, and this test has been directly inspired by James Randi. I tell you right now, it's thanks to James Randi we're doing this. We talk, talk to them about the claims of water divining, water dowsers. We say there are certain people, especially in Australia, who say they can find water using sticks and rods and everything else. And we tell the kids, we'd like to test that and we'd like to show you how you can test that for yourself. And this is what we do. So we have a little bottle of water and I'll come along and say, it's a typical divining rod. We might switch to the, uh, there we go. Now you can all see that. So we say to the kids, uh, walk along and watch what happens. It's really incredible. Oh my goodness me. Ooh, ooh, right. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. And the kids go, wow, look at, definitely a reaction there. That's just amazing. Now, gentlemen, would you just like to come over here for a second? If you just take one of those, one each. Water divining school here in Las Vegas. All right, let's try it one by one. We have to find the best water diviner because, you know, not everybody has the gift. Yeah, it's a bit funny. So, gentlemen, one by one, hold your dividing rods up like this, nice and straight, please. Not too close to the top. Oh, what are you looking for? Okay. <laughs> uh, if you walk along like this, there we go. And, well, mine works. Let's see who's the best. Okay, first off the rank. <laughs> Just... <gasps> uh, what do you think about that? Oh. I think you're trying too hard. <laughs> There's always one, I tell you, okay. Very good. Oh, yeah, I'm full of water, but that's the wrong one. Okay. So were you making up your mind or? Well, that's what we do, and we usually find one or two or one who it works very well. For the purpose of this demonstration, we used you, sir, if that's all right. Everybody else, thank you very much. Please yeah. stand for our volunteers. <laughs> all right, so we've got our likely candidate here. So this is great. The kids have an awful lot of fun when they're doing this, of course. They're all ru running around the sticks, and they're, they're moving everywhere. So you fancy yourself as a water diviner, huh? Oh, yeah. oh he's confident. Yeah. <laughs> all right, smarty. Now I assure you, and you saw me put these boxes here, there's nothing under them, under them. The only water is here, there's no water under the table. Definite reaction when you knew where the water was. Let's put the water under number four. Right, good, yeah, number four. Let's see if it still works if the water is covered with plastic. Please. Number four. <gasps> yeah, yeah, I'd give that a hit. That's pretty, that's pretty damn good. That's pretty good. Now, I'm going to ask for another uh, assistant to come up, if she wouldn't mind. Karen, would you please join us for a moment? Dr. Karen Stolzno. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Karen has just been elected to be the Australian Skeptic's new Chief Executive Officer and Editor of the magazine. So, well done. Karen is going to perform a very important task for us. In this makeshift uh, jar of cups here, I've got a dice, or a die, or a dice, or however you say it. Karen, would you like to give that a good rattle for me? A good rattle, you know. And the number is four. Oh, rattle it again. <laughs> That's not very scientific. Number is five. All right, well, just to make sure, all right? Okay, if you stand over there for a second. One more time, please. Now we've moved it. Randomization, you see. Ooh, pretty damn good. 
pretty damn good. Let's take this step one step, uh, this experiment one step further. Now, remember, as I'm kidding around up here, this is aimed at school kids, all right? We're getting message across to school kids. Phil, where's Phil played? I thought he could understand that. That's excellent. Okay. Nap time. Nap time. Oh, Phil. Would you... what's, what's your name, sir? Stephen. 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 Okay, Stephen, what we're going to do now is a blind test of your amazing powers. Stephen, would you like to sort of face the the wall there, just, and don't look at the screen too, and don't look here, in fact shut your eyes, good enough, all right, Karen, would you like to rattle the dice for me? Okay, I'm going to put the bottle under the very same box the dice told me to, okay, let's do that now. And I've moved all the other boxes so our water diviner doesn't, hopefully doesn't have a clue where it is. A blind test. Sir, would you like to try your luck one more time? No, this way. <laughs> There's two in every crowd. All right. We've hidden the water under one of these boxes. You don't know where it is. We've got a blind test. You're blind to knowing where it is. Please. Anytime, when you're ready. This dice did not have a negative... <laughs> okay, yeah, auditions for sidekicks later, all right? Okay. <laughs> Let's try it. You say one? You think one? That's incredible. I'm going to have to rethink this whole skepticism because, no, it's not under one. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was, in fact, under number five. Five. There we go. Interesting experiment. And at this stage, we look at the, the cl <laughs> Do you want to use two? Maybe. At this stage, we'll look at the students and say, that's a, that's a good test. It's interesting but it's got a fundamental flaw to the whole test. And yeah, sometimes some kid will, will know what the flaw is. I won't bore you now and, and, and try to make you uh, guess what it is, or you'd probably know what it is. The point is, you all knew where the water was. I knew where the water was. Karen knew where the water was. And with the best will in the world... <laughs> is there a casino just through there, Hal, that I didn't know about? Yeah, okay. With the best will in the world, you could have flinched or coughed or, or giggled and school kids will when they see their classmate up there and if it's under number five and they're going along like this, as soon as they get near it, they go, <gasps> or giggle or it gives a game away. So now we tell them we're going to take this experiment one step further and we're going to make it a double blind test. In other words, nobody is to know where the bottle is hiding and this is how we do it. Would you like to resume your hiding position, please? That's yours, the pink one, excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, and this is what we say to the school kids, I want everybody in this room to shut their eyes or turn around or both. I don't want anybody knowing where this bottle's going. I mean that. And we, we ran this home to the kids to make the point, of course, someone always peeks. But we've got to get the point across that nobody is to know where the bottle is. Okay, I'll let you know when you can look again. Okay, thank you very much. Of course, unless you peaked, and I'm sure some of you did, there are two people here who know exactly where the bottle is, Karen and myself. And this is exactly what we do when we're doing this test in the schools. Let's go, go. We, we usually just leave the room, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll just sort of sit here and 
look at the ceiling or something. Sir, any time you're ready. Look over that way. What? Ooh. So now we've done, or we've tried to do, a double blind test. You didn't know where it was. You didn't know where it was. Karen and I did, but we were, went away. For the purposes of the demonstration, we were just there, but normally we'd go right away. And you say it's under number? Three. Three. That's incredible. <laughs> number four. So. Thank you very much. A pin for you. Thank you. Thank you. If you would like more information about the amazing meeting, visit amazingmeeting.com.